Hello everyone, welcome back to another informative episode of AgriWords and Phrases. In this episode, we are going to talk about respiration in plants. Now, I know you might have seen this one coming because how could we talk about photosynthesis and not talk about respiration? Because both of them work together. Now, in order to get a better understanding of what respiration is in plants, we are going to answer a few questions. Now, the questions are, what is respiration, when does respiration occur, types of respiration, reasons for respiration, and what affects respiration. The first question is, what is respiration? Respiration is simply how the plant converts sugars into usable energy to sustain growth and development. But I could not sit here and give you a basic definition of respiration alone. Let us go a little bit deeper. What really constitutes respiration? What are those activities that really allows respiration to occur? Now, there are three main activities. Glycolysis, tricarboxylic acid cycle, and oxidative phosphorylation. Now, the tricarboxylic acid cycle that can also be called the Krebs cycle or the citric acid cycle. When you read different literatures, you'll find that they use them interchangeably. Now, in the glycolysis stage, sucrose is basically taken and converted into pyruvate and energy in the form of ATP. Now, during this glycolysis stage, more energy is produced in the form of ATP than what is used. Now, moving on to the Krebs cycle, the citric acid cycle, or the tricarboxylic acid cycle. Remember, they are all saying the same thing. Now, during this stage, you find that pyruvate is further converted into CO2 and additional ATP. And moving on to the oxidative phosphorylation, during this phase, this is the last phase or stage, you find that oxygen is reduced to water. And this is basically what happens in respiration. As I said, these are the three main activities that constitute respiration, which basically allows the plant to have enough energy to sustain growth and development. Now, the next question is, when does respiration occur? Now, there is a common misunderstanding out there that photosynthesis occur within the day and respiration occur within the night. Now, let us get that out of our head. That is not totally true. Respiration occurs 24-7. It is always occurring because respiration is how the plant gets its energy to sustain growth and development. So it cannot stop. The moment it stops, the plant will suffer. The plant will eventually die. Now, the only time respiration stops is if photosynthesis stops because respiration need photosynthesis to produce the vital sugars to convert into energy. Respiration occurs right throughout the plant's life cycle. It does not stop because the moment it stops is the moment that the plant stops getting the energy to sustain growth and development. The next question is, what are the types of respiration? Now, the types of respiration are maintenance respiration and growth respiration. Now, what is the difference between maintenance respiration and growth respiration? Growth respiration is respiration that basically supplies energy for the plant to grow. Now, remember in high school we learned about cell division cell differentiation and cell elongation. Now, growth respiration is what supplies this activity so that the plant cells can divide, they can differentiate, and they can elongate. Because if cell differentiation, elongation, and division, if that doesn't happen, the plant will not grow. So that is what growth respiration does. It supplies energy for this kind of activity. Now, what is maintenance respiration? In order for the plant to keep growing, there are certain vital biochemical processes that must go on, continuously go on, in order to 
allow the plant to continue to grow and develop. Now, maintenance respiration supplies the energy to all those vital organs that allow the plant or keeps the plant going. Right? That is what maintenance respiration does. So for example, in the leaf we have the chloroplast and we know that the chloroplast is used to chop sunlight to convert to chemical energy. Now maintenance respiration keeps the chloroplast going. It provides the energy for the chloroplast to continuously chop light energy and help to convert it into chemical energy. Now that is what maintenance respiration does along with other biochemical um, processes as well. Next question is what is the reason for respiration? Now, if the plant does not go through the respiration process, as I said before, it will basically die because respiration is the process that provides the energy for the plant to grow, provides the energy for the plant to chop the sunlight, you know, provides the energy for the plant to translocate nutrients throughout the different parts of the plant. Now, as you can see, if respiration is not present, the plant just literally will not have the energy to grow and to reproduce or to grow throughout its life cycle. Now let us move on to the last question. The question is, what can affect respiration in plants? Now there are a few things that can negatively affect respiration within plants, but we are going to talk about two of the main factors that negatively affect respiration. Now the first one is high temperatures. High temperatures reduce the rate of photosynthesis and once the rate of photosynthesis is reduced then the amount of sugars that photosynthesis produce will also be reduced. And remember during respiration, respiration depends on the amount of sugars that photosynthesis creates. So once the amount of sugars is reduced, then you'll find that respiration will also reduce. Now when respiration is reduced, that means that the plant will not have sufficient energy to sustain growth and development. So that is one way how temperature affects respiration. The other factor is water. Now water is a key component in the photosynthesis process. And if water is limited, then the amount of sugars that photosynthesis create will also reduce. Now what does that mean for respiration? It means that respiration will not have sufficient sugars to create energy to sustain growth and development of the plant. Now as you can see, these factors obviously link photosynthesis to respiration. Because if you don't have any photosynthesis, how can you have respiration? Photosynthesis actually creates the sugars that respiration needs to basically provide energy for the plant. So what you are seeing there is photosynthesis and respiration actually works hand in hand. I hope this explanation was beneficial to you. If you have any questions or comments, please put them in the comment section. And as usual, please remember to subscribe to my channel. Thank you.